What's in my drawers? Yeah. We're going to show people now. Uh, you shouldn't have scissors. Okay. Right, inside, go. Okay. No toddlers were hurt in the inspection of the box. The scissors were taken off him immediately. Please don't report me to social services. Anyway, let's go and have a look in the box. Roll the titles. Hi you guys and welcome to First Time Fishing With Me Big Bird. Firstly, please, can I get you to subscribe to the channel? You'll get all the notifications of all my uploading videos. Also, guys, if you head over to Instagram, there's extra content on there that isn't on YouTube. You can follow me at Big Bird FTF for first time fishing. If you head over there now, you'll see there's a picture of me and world number one feeder angler in England International, Steve Ringer, when I saw him up at Tunnel Barn Farm the other day. Also, a reminder of the first time fishing catch of the week competition. You can enter that. All you have to do is just hashtag first time fishing catch of the week with your photo of your catch of the week. You can win an adult's pin badge or you kids can win a medal. So what do I keep in my seat box? Well, I think it's all a bit orthodox, really. I think that we all sort of have all sorts of different things. But I thought I'd show you what I keep in my box. But there's a lot of people that have been asking what's in the box. So let's go and find what's in the box. We'll go to the garden. Let's go. So, guys, you join me in the garden. I've got my box outside. I don't know what you're going to make of it, to be honest, because I just put the stuff that I think I need in there. I, I don't have any set pattern or anything like that. And I think everybody's box is different depending on, you know, how you fish, your style of fishing. So uh, let's take a look. So guys, trying to make myself comfy down here. This is my box, it's a, a Matrix XR36 Pro. And I have two drawers. I'm quite a big chap and I find that having the two drawers raises my seat box slightly and stops any of that backache and stuff. Obviously, when you're setting up your seat box, I have got another video on that. Always make sure that your, your spirit levels are lining up because that will save you back in a five hour match. Let's have a look in these drawers first of all. So, top one. So first of all, I've got these two sections just here. Pair of scissors, a spare pair of scissors, a hook tie, everybody needs a hook tie, a floating Preston Disgorger. A ringer's disgorger. I find this one's slightly easier to get down the fish's throat because uh, it because it slims down. So that one's good. And my 30 gram guru plummet. All right, which is my go-to really. Not a lot of people like a like a. Oh. Where's it gone? Anyway, let's try again. Not many people like a a really heavy plummet. But I find this one really really helps me to find whether I'm on. A bit of clay on the bottom, whether I'm whether I'm on some gravel, really really helps. Polaroid sunglasses. These ones are sun gods. Um, if you go onto the sun god website, these are absolutely stunning. They're around about 50, 60 quid, I think. But you can choose your lenses, choose your frames, but the polarization on them is unbelievable. It's almost like you can see the fish through the water. So they're good. But that's just a spare top kit end piece just to keep the elastic and, and my rigging in place i only think that's in there just because probably one fell off <laughs> spare winder definitely need a spare winder whenever i'm in a match and i'm going to change my rig over i just want a spare winder by me um just so i can put it away nice and quickly and then i got a spare lock piece which is for um a preston off box system for the keep nets I've lost quite a few of these in the past, so I'll just keep a spare one. If we move the drawer slightly out further, you can see I've got a hook case. So this is my Guru Shadow case, which has got LWGs and Kaizen. As you can see, they're all set up like so. And I tend to put the hooks at the different lengths because then I know what actual length the hook is because trying to find the end of the loop i find it always a bit difficult at times so as you can see there all in order all different they're all ba bait banded but they're all different size hooks so that is my lwg and kaizen case 
and that goes in there. There's nothing else in that top drawer. So just put the stuff away. Now, second drawer. First of all, QM1 hook case. As you can see, different sizes, different line tension, bait bands, speed stops. So that's my QM1s. And then this one's my MWG case, all right? MWG. And again, bait bands, speed stops, bayonets, all different sizes. 18, 16, 14, 12s. So they live in there. As we move it out a bit further, punches. These are the matrix ones and they're, they're metal on the end and I find that they don't erode. And it's very easy to punch your luncheon meat, your bread. This is the 10 mil, easy to punch out. So I'll keep my punches in there. Size eight stots. I don't keep any other shots in my box. I find that any float that's a 0.2 gram or above, you can always manage to get it sitting right using a size eight. And if not, I just use my teeth and bite a little bit of the shot off. But the eights are my go-tos. Eights and sixes tend to be the really only ones that I tend to use because I always tend to fish a bit heavier than lighter. This side, this is the Avid Retractor Kit. So it's all magnetic, but each individual one is a tool. So this one's for putting my hook into um, a PVA bag. This one's a drill. So this one helps if I'm putting anything onto a bait band, but I'm putting the bait band through the bait. So I'll send this through the bait and there is the tiniest little hook just on the end. And that's able to pull the bait band through. So that's really useful. But that's my Avid Retractor Kit. That always stays in there. And then in this side as well, I've got these. These are the Preston rubber rings. So I place these around my top kit sections and I'm able to just loop my, loop my hook through here in a match. And it just keeps it all tidy. It means that you're not hooking onto anything else. It saves your top kit pole. You don't have to put your hook around around your actual top kit and get any damage on it. So these are brilliant. And these are my spares. And then if I move the draw out, all of this kit just here is if I get a break. So if my line breaks, if my elastic breaks, if I lose my Dacron, it's all here. I only have one line in here. It's a seven pound line. It can be a bit heavy if I'm fishing F1s, etc. Um, but for some of the places that I fish, it can be a bit light. You know, if we're going for if we're if we're going for carp in the margins or something like that. But it's seven pound N gauge line. I have size medium Dacron connectors, puller bungs to reset my elastic, and I only have one type of elastic in my box and it's a 12 to 14, because you should be able to land anything really on commercials with a 12 to 14. Little roach and stuff, there's a possibility that they'll, that they'll, that they'll bounce off, so it's not really good for sort of river fishing or something like that. This is just an MAP hybrid that I've got. It's a 12 to 14, it's a two millimeter diameter. And literally, I've just got that for if I need to do one top kit. I haven't touched that in ages. I have enough top kits and stuff. I make sure that I've always got a spare set up on a match. But if ever I need to re-elasticate, I know that I've got a 12 to 14 in there. So that's the side drawers. Let's move on to what's inside the box. As you can see here, I've got all my rigs. And let's get a bit of a closer look on this. So apologies, I'm out of shot for this, but as you can see, I've got several rigs made up. If we head over to here, I tend to use these diamonds in the edges. This one is a 0.3 gram float. Uh, it's already shotted, as you can see, and it's wound up ready for a hook to be placed on it of whatever I'm gonna fish. Here is a Guru Pinger. This is a 0.4 gram. 
Um, again, it's all shotted up and all correct. But I tend to use this one in a bit deeper water um, and probably around about 13, 14 meters out. Um, especially when there's a little bit of wind, it's a very stable float. This one is a Drennan Crystal float and this is my go-to for shallow fishing. A little dobber float and like I said, it's shotted, um, but I tend to like the shot right underneath the float with these so that the fall of the bait can be as natural as possible in falling the fish that I'm actually just pinging the bait out there. And this again is a Drennan Crystal, but this one is a point four and this is for my edge. This is when I'm after 12, 13, 14 pound carp in the edges, late on in a session, probably last hour of the match. I put all my shot in right by my four inch hook length, get that bait down to the floor as quickly as we possibly can so we can get a bite as quickly as possible. So that's what's in my box. Let's head back inside. So that's what's in my box. Let me know what's in yours. Let me know if I'm missing anything. Let me know if you think that I might benefit from having something else in there. Anyway, this has been First Time Fishing. Thanks again for watching and tight lines.